Good morning, Washington. I am the speaker, Dave Hughes at DCRTV.com. Welcome to uh, Dave TV for the um, third, for the third, for the third of January 2012. Well, um, one of my New Year's resolutions is to cut back on my intake of caffeine. Okay, I do a lot of tea drinking in the morning, and then I start pounding the uh, colas and stuff middle of the day. And I find that I go to bed fine, just, you know, hit the, hit the sack at 10 or 11, and I'm fine. And I sleep about halfway through the night, and then about 2 or 3, I wake up, and then I just lay there. Eh. And most of the time, I can fall back to sleep again, but some of the times I kind of don't, and it's just, you know, miserable the next day. So I've been, you know, asking around to friends and stuff, and people say, well, you know, one of the things you ought to do is cut back the caffeine, especially what you drink in the afternoon. So, you know, I always buy the cheap stuff. <laughs> this is the Safeway Refresh Cola. I haven't had any of this since December 31st, okay? None of this is, you know, this is, what, 99 cents a, a bottle. And I can't tell the difference between this and Coke or Pepsi. Tastes all about the same to me. Now, the giant brand cola does suck. But this is actually, the Safeway Cola is actually not too bad. But anyhow, this is it. I haven't had a, haven't had any of this. And you know what? I'm also taking um, melatonin, which a number of people told me was good because it's a natural chemical that's produced in your body. And as you get older, you don't produce as much of it. And, and therefore, you don't sleep as well. So I've been taking that the last couple nights. And I've been taking, um, um, what else am I? Oh, I have the sleepy time tea I sometimes sip on. And you know what? The last three nights have actually slept pretty good. Uh, one night I actually slept through the entire night with no waking up. And, uh, you know, like last night I did wake up about four in the morning, but I, and it was only up for 20 minutes before I fell back to sleep again. So sleeping a lot better. So it looks like uh, I love, and I love Coke. It gives you that nice jolt in the middle of the day. Like, ah, you know, so you don't get that 2.30 feeling. All right, folks. So let's see. What am I doing here? Big news, of course, of 2012 will be... Good evening. The big news of 2012 will be the start of CBS's all-news WNEW on 99.1 FM. Now, I have said, I have said, and I, I you know the more and more I'm thinking of this, if CBS is really going to make a go of this and challenge WTOP for that, huge $60 million of annual ad revenue. I really think that uh, CBS ought to be doing a really killer signal. 99.1 is, trans its transmitter is in Western Anne Arundel County near Crofton, okay? So it's not an inside the beltway signal. So, you know, if you're lo living in Prince George's or in Anne Arundel or even Baltimore, Southern Baltimore or Eastern parts of the DC Metro, you'll get it killer. Great. But once you get across the Potomac into Virginia and up into upper Montgomery County and that kind of thing and down into the Fredericksburg southern area there, you know, Prince William, you're going to start finding the signal ain't so hot. Okay. Now that may be fine. You know, if all CBS wants to do is dent TOP's ad revenue, that will might just work. But I still think that if CBS is really committed to doing an all news format on this station, they really want to, you know, really give some competition to TOP. They need two signals or they need, uh, you know, to keep it on 91. I still think my, my, I made this suggestion the other day. Here's the 99 one signal. Okay. It covers DC. It does. And Baltimore. Even, in fact, it covers the Baltimore Metro probably better than it covers the, uh, the DC Metro, but it already, you know, gets all the way up into Northeastern Maryland. It covers the Western part of the Eastern Shore around Easton over here. You know, it gets down into PG County and and even in Northern Virginia. It's not a bad signal. I get it here, and it's fine. But it, it comes in good on the car radio, but not so great on the clock radio. You have to kind of fiddle with it. So what if CBS were to take 106.7, which transmitter here is uh, in Northern Virginia, there in uh, Fairfax, Merrifield area, and put the all newser on two frequencies. Look at the coverage area they would have. You know, now I skewed this a little bit because 1067 doesn't, 1067 signal would probably get better into Baltimore if it wasn't for 1065. So 1067 doesn't make it that far to the northeast. So I did kind of skew this 
cut this short here. But the, sig the, the signal for 106.7 is great all the way in, down into Virginia. I mean, Fredericksburg, Warrington, even Charlottesville, Harrisonburg, Winchester, the western panhandle of uh, West Virginia, the eastern panhandle of West Virginia, killer signal. So if you had it on both of these signals, you would have one massive coverage area, probably the best FM signal in the Washington market, okay, Com with these combined signals. Um, so then what do you do? What do you do with 106.7, which is WJFK? Okay, you move it to 94.7, you know, out of Bethesda. And say adios fresh. I don't know. You maybe you could take PGC and try to tweak that format on 95.5 so that you get some of those fresh listeners. You know, you make it an amp format. A uh, maybe you take PGC and you flip it into some kind of a rhythmic contemporary format that would kind of take some of that fresh music and merge it with the PGC. You know, urban music. You know, those could gel pretty well. And you could you could take one killer signal out of that and put it on 95.5. So then you would have WJFK on 94.7 out of Bethesda with a good signal in the, in the center of the Washington area. You have a killer signal for this all-newser, 99.1 and 106.7. And then you would also have, you know, whatever's left of Fresh and PGC together. You know, maybe move Tommy McFly over to do the mornings on PGC. You know, I mean, now that Big Tigger's no longer there, you know. I, but I really, and the more and more I'm thinking about it, the more and more I'm thinking that CBS really ought to, you know, do this from day one. Just surprise everybody, and when they launch that all news, or have it on 1067 and 991 later this month. So, what do we know so far about the new CBS all news? Okay, well, we've got drips and drabs. Now, CBS hasn't released any information about the station let, since they made that announcement in mid November. What was it, the 17th, 19th, something like that, where they actually said, Hey, we're going to do it. Remember, we didn't even know the call letters of it then, but we did know this. Okay, this is the news that CBS has officially announced. Robert Sanchez is the program director, and he comes from WCBS, where he was, uh, that's up in New York there, a, a big 880, where the, that's our old newser up there, one of their old newsers, where he was assistant program director. So he's the program director here at uh, w, the new WNEW. And we also know officially that Mc, Michelle Combs Dolge, who uh, used to be over at WTOP, she's now the news director. Okay, that was the official announcement that was made back in mid-November when they announced they were going to be doing the station. But since then, we've had a lot of dribs and drabs of who's going and who may not be going. And I thought we'd all just put it all together for you here so you could see at least to the best of our knowledge who's going to be over there. Here's what we reported this morning. Chris Barnes. Okay, Chris Barnes, he's coming down from WSYR, a news talker in Syracuse. And he's probably going to be doing overnights and reporting for the new 99.1 WNEW. And uh, Bill Rakoff, he's a, a Baltimore radio vet who's currently working at KDKA, which is a news talker that CBS owns in Pittsburgh. He's also joining the new 99.1. We've got that confirmed today. We've also told you that Tommy McFly, who does the mornings at Fresh 94.7, he'll be doing entertainment news for the new 99.1. Now, we did report that Greg Miklos might be joining over from, he's coming over from Channel 7 WJLA to be assistant news director. We reported that, and then we got a, a, some rumblings that maybe that won't happen. So that's kind of up in the air. Not quite sure about the status of this hire. Uh, we did also report, this was confirmed by WTOPers, that Evan Haining, uh, a longtime anchor and reporter for WTOP, will also be joining 99.1. And we also did report that Amy Morris, who uh, was heard mornings on WFED, WTOP's sister station, which covers federal government news, is also moving over to the WNEW team, along with Sarah Jacobs. Sarah had used to do the news on Mix 106.5 up there in Baltimore, another CBS station. And we've heard that she's also going to be on 99.1. So these are the people that we know from all of our dribs and drabs the last month or so are, are, are joining WNEW, okay? So I guess we know. We know that for sure, okay? These two, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, maybe nine. Okay, and we're told the station probably will have a staff of somewhere around 20, 25. So we know half, maybe a little less than half of, you know, who's, who's coming over there. So I just wanted to summarize everything because it it's been dribs and drabs over the last couple weeks. You know, every couple days we have another, we hear another rumbling of someone else who's joining the station. So that is that. So what I would do if I was, you know, Dan Mason there, <laughs> Dan Mason at CBS Radio, you know, running the whole thing, I would say, hey, we need to put this thing on two signals, 
and someday get a better, you know, get a better studio. I mean, if you're going to be covering Washington and you're going to be having lawmakers come out to your studio to do interviews and stuff, you know, you might want to have something on Capitol Hill or Northwest DC or something, you know, you know, maybe they could build a, maybe they could get, you know, it'd be funny. They could get space right across the street from WTOP there on Idaho Avenue, <laughs> at least the building, like right across the street. <laughs> oh, that would be nasty. Uh, so there, that is uh, our WNEW update uh, as far as we know it. Okay. Well, anyhow, we're almost back hitting the uh, ten and a half minute mark here, so that's Dave TV for today. Thanks for watching. If you got any more uh, WNEW news, you maybe know you know you're joining it. And nobody's let us know yet. Send us a little email. We won't reveal who sent it. We never do. Thanks for watching, Dave TV for today, the third of January two thousand twelve. So there.